Hi everybody, welcome back to the perfect tips and tricks with OESD. I am Carrie. it is a beautiful Monday uh, here. I am hopeful all of you had a wonderful Easter weekend, as restful and re restorative as you can uh, could have gotten. So uh, welcome back. It is, I'm very excited to uh, introduce or to reintroduce to you Kimberly Dodson. She's here with me. We'll uh, bring her up in a second, but uh, thanks again for joining us. This week we are kicking off Stabilizer Week. We will be um, with Kimberly Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of this week, and she will be kind of breaking down Stabilizer. So I know this is something that a lot of you have asked for, so I'm really excited. Hopefully you will have lots of questions and we can ask Kimberly all sorts of, of good things. We'll, we'll stump the educator, though I'm not sure, not sure that's possible. Um, also, at the end of this video, we are going to be doing a little show and tell. Some of you have sent me your uh, finished embroidered baskets for all seasons. So I'm going to show some of those. If you haven't shared yours yet, there's still plenty of time. I'd love to, to see them. You can email me at showandtell at OESD.com or post them right on the Facebook page. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring up Kimberly. Let's see. Kimberly, there you are. Welcome. Hi there. Can you hear me? I think we're good. Okay, awesome. So um, you are going to teach us all about Stabilizer this week, right? Yes, I'm so excited because I know we get a lot of questions. I would say probably the most common questions usually involve Stabilizer. Yeah, I think it's, it's sort of um, sometimes I think people get intimidated because there are so many options. And I know we've talked a little bit even in this, in the Perfect Tips episodes of, you know, that there are different ways to sort of skin a cat, as they say, you know, you can you can get to the same thing with different uh, recipes, but we like to teach you the, the simplest and the most foolproof ways. And hopefully um, we'll clear up some things this week for sure. Yes. All right, so um, without further ado, if you wanna, I'm I know gonna, you've got a PowerPoint prepared for us. I will pull up my computer screen to share. And Perfect. If it will open, that would even be more helpful. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Lots of clicking. All right, I can see it. Looks great. All right. Well, let's talk about stabilizer. Um, so today, um, what I wanted to do was kind of give like a little quick intro about Stabilizer. And then I'm going to tell you um, more in depth about the wash away category. So, uh, so on Stabilizer, um, there we go. It's actually going to click. Um, so, so just a little bit about like what it is. So um, so I think that most of you, if you've embroidered very long, you know that it's our foundation for our embroidery and keeps our fabric from shifting and puckering while we're embroidering. But something that I hear a lot that people aren't aware of is that um, for some of the stabilizers, they keep your embroidery project looking nice throughout the life of the item. And so even though we're talking about washaways today, but that's one of the reasons you can't use washaway on every single project because sometimes you need that stabilizer uh, in there to keep your item looking nice. Uh, That's a great tip because I think people think about it just in the hoop. In the hoop. It, it matters so much after. Yes, it really does. And and when we talk about the cutaways and the tearaways, we'll, we'll see that a lot more um, of, you know, why you need it and, and why you need to keep it in there. Um, so one thing that I always like to make sure everyone is aware of is that when you buy any stabilizer from OESD, that if you keep your packaging information, so you can see I have a little picture of a poly mesh label, on the back side of that label are the instructions to use the stabilizer. So if it's a fusible, it'll give you information on how to fuse it, how to unfuse it. Um, just, you know, it's always good to read through that uh, before you start using that product. And it's also a good idea to keep that packaging with your stabilizer. There's all sorts of different ways, tuck it inside the roll or, you know, just kind of find what works for you. But I um, think it's really important to keep track of that um, packaging information. Uh, um, so some things that make OESD stabilizers, because um, 
kind of special or, or unique. Um, one thing is they're non-directional. So when you think of non-directional, that means they don't stretch and they don't have a grain line. And another thing is that they don't have high and low spots. When you see stabilizers that have high and low spots, you can literally look at them, hold them up to the light, and you'll see um, parts of the stabilizer that you can almost see through and then other parts that you can't. And one um, thing that kind of goes with both of those, many of us have been taught over the years that if we use two layers of a stabilizer, that we need to put the second layer at a 45 degree angle. And the reason that they recommend that is because um, they're concerned that either the stabilizer has stretch or grain, um, meaning it's not um, equally um, strong in every direction, or they're concerned about those high and low spots. And they think, well, if we stack our stabilizer at an angle, we'll either, it'll give it that stability in every direction, or you'll have high spots covering low spots, and you'll have a better stability. When you have used OESD stabilizers, you don't have to worry about any of those because they, we don't have any of those problems. So when you need to stack stabilizer, you just stack it straight on top of each other. That will save you a lot of money in the long run because you have to cut a bigger piece of stabilizer in order to get that 45 degree angle. So keep that in mind when you're using OESD products, you don't need to do anything crisscrossing or anything like that. We of course have consistent quality. Um, you know, I love that in an OESD, you kind of have to have the full circle. If we have want our designs to look beautiful stitched out, we had better provide a good st stabilizer and other good products to go with them. So you get that full circle with OESD. And then of course, um, years of expertise. <clears throat> um, OESD is one of the oldest embroidery companies that is still around and the, the knowledge of the employees um, combined gives you, you're going to get the best products that you possibly can. So uh, a little helpful hint, um, all of our stabilizers are color coded. So when you are out shopping and you're looking for a particular one, you know what label um, color to be looking for. If you're looking for a cutaway, you know anything that has a red band on it. The tearaways are purple bands. The blues um, banded ones are washaways. And then if you see a yellow or kind of an orangish band, those are specialty products. Um, and so uh, today we're going to talk about the blue banded items, the washaways. So here are um, some washaway stabilizers. Let's talk about what um, what we use wash away for. So just remember when you're using a wash away, it's going to wash away. So we only want to use wash away stabilizers on projects where we want the stabilizer completely gone. So if you're thinking of fabrics, what kind of fabrics would you use a wash away on? Uh, that would be your really sheer lightweight fabrics. So you're thinking of a Batiste, um, Organza, those tool, anything that is really, really lightweight. Um, some, there's like some specialty ones out there. I think of like lawn fabric, you know, um, some of those might use it. Um, and then we also use wash away on other projects. Uh, so freestanding lace and applique projects. And then we also have a wash away topper. So, uh, so these are the four um, wash aways that we have. You see here I have Aquamesh, Aquamesh Plus, um, Badge Master and Stitch 2.0. We're going to break those down and talk about each one of them. Uh, so here's Aquamesh. Um, and I see this actually on the Perfect Stitch quite often. Uh, someone will ask kind of what's the difference between Aquamesh and Badge Master and when and where and how. And um, so if you, um, so in a wash away, if you, you know, we have Aquamesh. If your stabilizer looks kind of almost like fabric, it's um, white looking. Um, you can still see through it, but but it's kind of fibrous. Um, and so, so if you're looking for that, it's it's gonna you know, you're gonna not be able to really see through it very well. So I, I don't know if you can see in that picture of the hand kind of holding the aqua mesh, but it's it's opaque, but it definitely doesn't feel plasticky. It feels more like fabric. And we use that um, for various things, um, freestanding lace, of course, 
And then those lightweight fabrics. Um, Aquamesh washes out in warm water. Uh, so <clears throat> if you're trying to rinse it, you're going to use um, running, I would say, you know, running warm water. Uh, so just hold it under the, the tap in your sink. Uh, don't hold all of it. You know, I always trim about a quarter of an inch or so around my project. You don't want to get too close to the stitches because you don't really need to. But I don't want to have, you know, eight inches of stabilizer trying to rinse that out. I So I trim kind of close to the project and then I rinse it out. The other thing with Aquamesh, just so you know, is it's not sensitive to air humidity. So what that means is that um, a lot of um, wash away stabilizers, you need to store in airtight containers like a Ziploc bag or something. And Aquamesh, you don't have to worry about that. So I just wanted to show you kind of some ideas and things of, you know, what would you do? What kinds of projects would you use Aquamesh for? So this is one of my favorite design collections. This is a buildable freestanding lace doilies. Um, and so um, you just stitch out all these little parts and you could make a bedspread of these parts if you wanted to. It's just amazing. Um, just and and kind of the sky's the limit of what shapes. I mean, there's because they do come in multiple shapes and sizes and things, and they all have little connection points. They're really easy to um, work with, and so I just thought that's one um, project that I definitely would use Aqua Mesh on. Uh, the other things are some of these in the hoop items. So you can see this is organza, and. Um, these are, one of these is um, in the picture, the white one is the Christmas elegance bags. The um, the yellow ones are sachet, in the hoop sachet bags. And those are all done, and there's, it's, once again, a really easy in the hoop project, but it looks really elegant when it's done. And to make those, we used aqua mesh. And then things like these types of in the hoop projects. So the, the picture here shows the name drop luggage tags. But you would also use it in things like our towel hangers, um, door hangers, any of those where you have that nice satin stitch and you want it to be, um, you know, have no evidence of the stabilizer when you're done. So um, so that's a little on aqua mesh. Oh, I wanted to show you this one too. This is a, a snowflake and I don't know how well you can see in here, but I stitched it out with aqua mesh. This is a really cool design. It's about this snowflake is like eight inches big. It's awesome. And uh, and so, um, but if you kind of, I don't know how well you can see, but I put a layer of Angelina fibers in there. And so when it was done, it, uh, so I used aqua mesh, but I put a layer on top of the aqua mesh before I embroidered of the Angelina fibers. And um, if you've never used them, they're pretty cool. You they're like all these different fibers and you can mix them together and make all your own colors. And, um, but then you melt them between a Teflon sheet so that they are like one piece, but you could use something like Mylar in this. So, so kind of think, or, you know, think about other ideas. Um, but the Angelina fibers in here made this, um, snowflake really iridescent, really pretty. So just a, something to kind of give you an idea, stuff that you have might have around your house that you wondered why you bought that when you were at the store and, now you have an idea of what to use with it. <laughs> um, so Aquamesh Plus. Uh, so we just talked about Aquamesh. So this one, when we use the word plus with a stabilizer, um, that means that it's that kind of stabilizer. So this is still Aquamesh stabilizer, but we've added the word plus, which means it is pressure sensitive adhesive. That's the scientific word for it's sticky and it's gonna have a paper covering over it. And uh, so you would hoop it, you would score it and remove that paper. And then you have a sticky wash away stabilizer. When you see that word plus, um, that is actually a really important word in stabilizer because we have some other sticky stabilizers that you might have heard of called stable stick. And they're also pressure sensitive and adhesive. But if you see the word plus, that means that the adhesive that is used is also um, deactivated or water soluble, which of course you would really want that in aqua mesh. It would be really frustrating if your stabilizer was water soluble, but your adhesive wasn't. And by the way, I have found that stabilizer out there. It's not fun to use. And uh, cause you have a big, basically a big goopy mess when you're trying to rinse it out. And, uh, and I've heard of, um, you know, some people say, well, you need to use, um, 
things like water softeners or something, just know with OESDs, Aquamesh Plus, you do not have to um, use anything to get it to rinse out nice and really turns out really well, rinses out really well. Uh, so so the, the basic stabilizer of it is still that opaque mesh um, fabric looking. It's just got that sticky um, surface on it as well. So we use this on um, the same types of things, you know, the same types of fabrics or, um, you know, your lightweight fabrics, your lace projects, um, just something when you need all the stabilizer gone, but it's something that's maybe a little bit more difficult to hoop. Kimberly, we have a couple of questions. If Can I interrupt okay. you for a second? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the first one is, um, Cindy asked if you can use Aquamesh Plus in your freestanding lace projects. Yes, oh yes. Um, in fact, I'll show you later, I'll, uh, um, I'll show you a picture of one that I used Aquamesh Plus on with Badge Master and it was pretty cool. So yeah, awesome. definitely. Okay, and then Melissa wants to know, she just used the last of her um, Aquamesh today. So obviously she can order some more, but in the meantime, um, she has a uh, Badge Master, an aqua film at home. <laughs> so what do you think she should do? Um, That's a some, tricky one. <laughs> yeah, make some patches. Um, <laughs> do something else until you get the would, right stuff. Yeah, because the because really the badge master, I I don't recommend it and for just regular freestanding lace projects. Right, um, because the aqua mesh, and we talked about this a little bit when we made the basket, is the aqua mesh gives it that like stability because it doesn't perforate right. as easily, right. and the badge master makes it stiffer. So you kind of right. need that combination, right? Right. But yeah, but I'll show um, in here when I talk about badge master, I'll show a couple things that I made where I just use bad nothing but badge master. So so it sort of depends on the project. There are things you can make. <laughs> until your aqua mesh comes in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Carry on. Those are the questions for now. Okay. Great. Um, so, so you're going to use aqua mesh plus on the same types of projects uh, that you would use regular aqua mesh on, just things that are more difficult to hoop. And the same rules apply. It's going to rinse out in warm water. So, what kinds of things do I use aqua mesh plus for? Napkin corners. Uh, so, these are the fruit tablecloth and napkin corners. Uh, these ones, I you really kind of want to use the aqua mesh on because it's uh, you're embroidering on the corner, and if you were to hoop the corner, it would be very difficult to embroider on it because it would be outside the hoop. So anything that you want to do where it's on a corner or something, and of course this is lace, so we definitely want it to um, the stabilizer to wash out completely. And a little hint on these, when I do something like, um, and the same thing with the doilies that I showed before, when I do these types of projects, I don't want any stiffness in them at all. Uh, I want them to feel like really soft lace. And so when I do those ones, I'll rinse it out, but sometimes I will use hotter water and I'll end up getting a softer. And these, um, uh, I also had someone ask me once if you could wash your freestanding lace. Well, these are napkins. They are used and they are washed. And I don't wash them on delicate. I don't do anything special. These were probably washed with a load of towels on hot water. <laughs> and, um, and so they're, they're definitely, um, you know, they're stable. They're sturdy. The lace doesn't come undone. Um, and, but the, the more you wash them, the softer they will get, just so you know that. And then, uh, so these, I have a couple of scarves here, and so they're kind of hard to see because um, it's almost, this one's like a tone on tone. Um, one of my favorite designs, the other scarf has the same design. But this is, um, so this particular one in this picture is a, um, is a cashmere scarf. Um, so it's very kind of flimsy. Uh, I love also embroidering on pashmina scarves. They're very tricky. And so I use Aquamesh Plus, and let me tell you what I do is I take the scarf and I take the area that I'm going to embroider and what's going to be in the hoop, and I make an Aquamesh Plus sandwich. Mm -hmm. So I put the Aquamesh Plus on the back, and then I put another layer on the front, and so they're stuck down, and then I hoop the whole thing. So what happens is because the things like cashmere 
um, and pashmina, they're a little bit stretchy. Um, and so that keeps them from distorting, but gives them a really good surface to embroider. You'd be amazed at what you can embroider on those kind of flimsy flat fabrics um, do, using that technique. So you would take your Aquamesh Plus and you would peel off the paper. So you like a, yeah. got a big sticky piece of Aquamesh, essentially. Yeah. S like slap it on there, smooth it down, flip it over, do it on the same side, and then put the right. whole thing in the hoop. Right. So, so, so you um, so you don't really think of using aqua mesh as a topper, but it in this situation it works really well because you can get some you know really nice embroidery on something that um, I would say you know those pashminas and things like that are pretty difficult to embroider on. Yeah, um, I, they're on a list of my things I do not like to embroider on. Once you use the aqua mesh sandwich recipe, you will want to embroider every scarf you have. All right, I'm, I'm going to try it. Uh, so here's the same thing, and I the same design, actually, and this is really hard to see in a picture. Um, but this is, I found this remnant of silk organza at a store when I was shopping, and um, and I did the same exact thing, the Aquamesh Plus sandwich, um, and it made it. So you, you know, you think organza and a big, huge design. I don't think so, but it works. It really does work. And and I use these kind of light um, designs. I mean, you can tell in this one, it's not just line work. I mean, there is a little bit of, you know, fill in there, but, um, and also the other thing when I do these, I match my bobbin thread because people are going to see the other side. Um, right. Right. Yeah. This, that's one of those things people ask all the time on a scarf. It's never going to lay perfectly. You know, it's never going to always be right side out I and mean, get right. outside in the wind and, yeah. you know, but uh, but the sepia petals is actually a pretty good design for scarves in case you're looking one. All I really right. like that one. <laughs> I'm putting it on my list. <laughs> and so so next stabilizer in our um, wash away category is Badge Master. So uh, Badge Master is great for patches and badges. Um, it also washes away completely. And um, we use it for with aqua mesh in those freestanding items. So if you watched the basket last week, you saw Carrie doing a lot of that. Um, so you um, so you would layer aqua mesh and then the layer of badge master on the top and embroider your project, and it adds that stiffness to the the item, so it'll stand up better. Um, <clears throat> but badge master, and believe me, you can rinse badge master if you work hard enough, you can rinse it completely out and have a very soft item. So, uh, but it's, it takes a little bit longer. So you're not as likely to do that. And that's why we like it with those, um, those standalone um, uh, lace items. So, but like I said, you do other things. So here's some things that I've made with Badge Master by itself. So this is a patch and uh, so there's a design collection called Scout by Cotton and Steel that has a whole bunch of patches, including some blank patches. And so I took a uh, the spool of thread from an Amanda Murphy collection called Sewing Room and put it in one of the blank patches. And this um, I just uh, keep like my in my sewing room. It has like my wonder clips and stuff in it. It's a little kind of a cork box. Um, and so so that was just made with two layers of uh, badge master and look how clean and perfect and the thing is that when we talk about badge master perforates so I actually did not rinse anything here it just perforated out of the badge master which is why we don't want it um, necessarily in some of those heavy dense freestanding items because it really does perforate but this uh, patch is pretty good sized I think it's about three inches or so I mean it's a it's a good sized patch and lots, you can see lots of satin stitch there. So it it held up, um, but I did use two layers. And this is another option if you um, want to do applique. Uh, so this is a picture of a baby little onesie that's like a preemie size. And I have a multi-needle machine and I couldn't even get this onesie into my smallest multi-needle machine, let alone a hoop big enough to put this cupcake on. So uh, so what I did instead was I made a patch. And so this was done with two layers of Badge Master. And it's an applique design from Cute as a Cupcake. 
And so what I did is I stitched this applique design just directly onto the badge master. So just like I was making a patch. So I hooped up the badge master, two layers of it, and stitched my placement stitch onto the badge master, made my applique, which then perforated right out. And then I was able to fuse it to the little baby onesie. And then the other advantage to this is there's no stitches on the inside of this onesie. So if you had like a little tiny baby or, um, uh, or you, you know, you can do this with any applique, you know, maybe you just have a difficult time hooping these kind of tubular items. You could do this on a sleeve or a pant leg. You know, there's all sorts of um, places that it would work. Uh, so I, so I basically made my applique as a patch. And then if you're wondering how did I fuse it, um, this is a yellow banded product, but I'll plug it right now because I use fuse and seal on both of those on the little cork box and on that a little baby onesie. Uh, fuse, so fuse and seal is the, is great. That's it's like a, it's a permanent glue essentially, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and so it, um, but anytime you want to put a patch on something, you put that on. And I used to use fuse and seal. I have three sons and they were in Cub Scouts and they earned patches and, you know, and some of those like, Oh no, they earned another one. Now I've got to attach it. But I used this on their Cub Scout uniforms and they, it never came off. And and believe me, when they would go to day camp or whatever, they were washed, you know, yes. every day. <laughs> I've actually used it. I've done, um, you've probably seen these. I did a pair of um, shoes and I embroidered some of our tiny treasures. And then I used Fuse and Seal to fuse them to the, the shoe. Yeah. So, you know, people always say, well, how could I embroider on a shoe? I mean, there are ways, there are certainly yeah. other ways to do it. But the simplest thing would be to just embroider the item. Um, you know, it needs to be able to stand on its own a bit and then use a product like Fuse and Seal and you can actually sort of glue it on. Right. You don't have to tell anybody your secret. Yep. yep. And I um, I actually do that a lot. My daughter um, likes to buy vans and put embroidery on them. And so that this is what we do. We Fuse and Seal, we embroider design out as a patch and then we um, use the Fuse and Seal and attach it. Yep. And just as a, as a note, um, somebody mentioned, and I, we do have another product called Fuse and Fix. Um, I know you probably don't have a, a slide, but there is a big difference between the two. Oh, yes. um, I have a person who mentions that they used it instead of spray adhesive for the picture frame. And I'm thinking they probably used Fuse and Fix, not Fuse and Seal. Probably, yeah, because the applique, um, applique Fuse and Fix is... Um, fusible on one side and then the other side is sticky uh where the fuse and seal it's it's like a film when you look at it it looks um i don't know how to i mean it's like a clear film but both sides are fusible so you'd fuse it to the back of your patch or your badge um and then you peel that the other paper off from the other side of the fuse and seal and then that reveals the part that you fuse to your your, your patch to an item but it works really well. Um, and so so just so you know, that's what I used on the, the little baby onesie and also on the cork. Yep. So. And uh, Ginny out in the world asks how many layers are needed with these products. And I don't know, Ginny, if you're asking about the fuse and um, seal specifically, and that's just one. The other stabilizers really are going to depend on, on the yeah. project. Typically, any wash away stabilizer that I use, I'm using two layers. Yeah. So if it's two layers of Aquamesh, two layers of Badge Master, or one layer of Aquamesh and one layer of Badge Master, but there's always at least two layers involved. Agree. And so uh, let's talk about the Badge Master plus the Aquamesh. So this goes back to, you know, the co combining the two and the basket that Carrie did last week. So that's, we just say that they equal, you know, great results on those upright items. So, uh, so when you look at, you know, like this pumpkin um, from the freestanding Halloween patch, you know, you want that to stand up nice and firm and look full. Um, this windmill, once again, you want that, you know, that upright, you want it to, to stand up and, you know, cause you don't want it to look floppy. Um, I like the, you know, when they stand kind of firm and, um, and so this bowl, uh, this is the one where I was talking about 
um, someone had asked if you could use Aquamesh Plus for your freestanding lace. And so when I made this bowl, I pre-cut all of my pieces. So, uh, so when I say that, I actually used a digital cutter, loaded them in. So I had all of these bowl parts pre-cut. So when I stitched my placement stitch, I just had to stick the part down. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. I didn't have to do any trimming in the hoop. And so when I did that, I used um, Aquamesh Plus because when it stitched the placement stitch, I was able to just stick the part down and it stuck in the hoop while it did the rest of the items. So when that I did that though, I still needed that um, the badge master because so, so what I would do is I would hoop my Aquamesh Plus I stitched my placement stitch, I stuck my part down where it belonged, and then I laid my badge master over the top of it and it stuck in place because it would stick to the Aquamesh Plus as well. And then I embroidered the rest of all the detail and the um, on the parts. So so I started out with just a layer of Aquamesh, but as soon as I started embroidering all anything pretty or that needed that um, extra um, stability, the badge master was there. So, the, so yes, you definitely can use um, Aquamesh Plus uh, for the freestanding items. And so the last one is our Stitch 2.0. So uh, if you watch Tamara's video on um, the toppings, she talked about Stitch 2.0. Uh, so I'll just kind of briefly go over it, but I'll show you a couple things. Um, so it's a water soluble topping. So it uh, goes on top of items. It's not going to help with stability. Uh, it's uh, really just to keep your um, embroidery looking pretty and kind of on top of your fabric, keeping it from sinking down. Um, it's kind of got a texture that helps it not stick to your embroidery foot. That um, also makes it easier to handle and it tears away very easily. So typically I tear away as much as I can and then whatever's left, I um, remove with water. So you can see the picture here. You can really see a difference. I, I like looking at the letter B there because you can look at the left one and see how the, um, that, how, that towel is kind of trying to pop and poke around that B where the one on the right that has the stitch 2 on it just looks really clean. So when you're thinking, okay, when do I use stitch 2-0? Um, if you've embroidered very long, you know, towels, um, you know, anything that has any fuzziness um, or nap or pile. Uh, so that would be, you know, maybe minky or fleece or um, some of those things. So, uh, so anything that feels fluffy, but honestly, anytime that you feel like you want your, your embroidery to really pop, use a topper. And if you haven't watched Tamara's video on toppers, go back and watch that because she really goes over that a lot better. Um, but I'll just show you a couple of pictures. So this was a llama done on fleece. And this is a really great example of using a topper because the little curlies of the llama, um, those would have really sunk down and been hidden in the, the fleece. And you can see that they're nice and, you know, you can see them really well. And so I, um, and I love that llama. One of my really favorite. Cute. <laughs> and then another um, item that uh, people don't think to use a topper on are knits. So this is a little baby outfit and penguin and fish who are we going to have penguin and fish tomorrow? Tomorrow. Right? Yep. Yes. Okay. So this is one of my favorites, this little sloth. And you can see how um, he just really stands out on the knit. Uh, your designs really do tend to kind of sink down into knits. And that might be something you don't really think of as being like a heavy plushy fabric, but it really using a topper, definitely you want um, makes, you know, anything on a knit. So a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, anything like that uh, is going to look a lot better if you use a topper. Um, and so this one was also done with the Stitch 2.0. And then, so one of the things I kind of wanted to end with was, um, and I'll kind of do this whenever I find so, so when I um, I have you know other sewing things that I do in my room that don't involve embroidery and 
every so often you realize how much your stabilizers can help with those other types of projects. So I wanna show you a couple of those with the Stitch 2.0. So this one is on my serger. And so the next one I'll show you is on a serger too. So um, you can use Stitch 2.0 to make a perfect blanket stitch on fleece or a uh, minky or something like that. So if you see the one on the left, what I did was I set my serger up for a flat lock and then I put my layer of fleece down and then I put my stitch 2 on top of it. So I don't know how, if you can see that in the picture, but there's, so there's, um, and my fleece is right side up, stitch 2 is laying on top of it and I just stitched down. When you're done, you take the, uh, stitch or the stitch 2 and you just grab it and pull it to the edge of the fabric or you know so you're pulling it away from the the main body of the fabric and you just give it a tug and the picture on the right is the stitch 2 now it's on the right of the fabric which is really hard to see because it's clear but it's laying there <laughs> but you can see it pulled that stitch to the right and revealed a perfect blanket stitch using a flat lock and so if you ever, just, if you have a serger and you can set it up for a, a flat lock stitch and just, that's all you have to do, put the stitch duo down and then when you're done, tug it and you have a perfect blanket stitch. Um, and then this one, this one I love. So I, these are some uh, rounded um, napkins that I made. And um, one thing that is really tricky on a serger, is, especially if you're going around curves and you're doing a rolled hem, is you get these little pokies. So if you look at the napkin on the left, look at how often, like every so often, you're seeing some blue fabric popping out of there. And that's frustrating. It drives me crazy because you're like, I did it perfect. The napkin on the right is the same exact stitch, same settings, same everything, but all the only difference was when I stitched it, I put Stitch Duo on top of the napkin. And I mean, night and day difference, but look how much prettier that looks. So those are my two helpful hints if that you can use some of our products, you know, maybe you have another machine in your house. Uh, use your, um, you know, Stitch Duo topper if you're doing decorative stitches on your sewing machine. It will make them pop. It'll make them look nicer. So it's not just for embroidery topping. Yeah, anytime you want a stitch to not sink into a fiber in whatever application, right? Whether, like you said, right. in the serger, on your sewing machine, right. you know, we think about these products for embroidering because that's our that's sort of our brain over here, but totally can be used in, in many different cases. I mean, you really probably could use it if you're doing handwork also. I mean, I am no hand embroidery specialist, but I would suspect that if you are embroidering or putting any stitches on something that has a nap, it would help. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's so many different types of things, but I just, you know, I really wanted to touch on this because so often we think, you know, we put this, the embroidery supplies in the embroidery corner and they don't come out. And yet, you know, for other types of sewing applications, they need to come out because they really can make a difference. Absolutely, a great, great point. All right, so that is my presentation, so. Thank you, I think we had a, a lot of, uh, questions. I think you got most of them. I tried to answer some of them while you were talking. Um, but um, Kimberly will be back with us Wednesday. And what are we doing Wednesday? Help me remember. Cutaway, <laughs> cutaway stabilizer. Cutaway day. Wednesday is cutaway day. So um, I'm sure people are saying to themselves, well, how many different cutaways could there be? And we, <laughs> we will tell you. We'll tell you how many and what and why and when you want to use them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that was fantastic. Um, that I, I learned some things as I do always when listening to you guys talk. So thank you very, very much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you. All right. So that was fantastic from Kimberly. Thank you guys all for your um, great questions. I think we got most of them. Um, the, um, I wanted really quickly to show you guys. Um, let's see. There we go. So I, again, I told you at the beginning of the episode, I got some great um, show and tells from our um, stitch embroider along this, this weekend, this week, last week. Um, let's check out some of the finished ones because I have really enjoyed seeing them. 
Um, Pamela Hall sent this beautiful blue one. That's my favorite colors, uh, absolutely. And I thought that ribbon was such a neat little accent um, with the little roses. Thanks, Pamela. Della sent in all of her accents. I love that in the traditional brown uh, basket color and I love the, the flip-flops. That was pretty smart to make a pair of flip-flops. I didn't even occur to me, so that would be super cute on the on a summertime basket. Thank you for um, sending that to me, Dillis. My friend Annette uh, from Buffalo, she did one with beautiful with her Easter lilies and her bunnies um, and her runner. Um, she said that she used uh, gift wrap ribbon for her accent piece and it gave it a little bit of extra rigidity. That's kind of fun to see the difference uh, with different ribbon. And Sharon sent these to me through email. Sharon, this is beautiful, beautiful. I love the, the difference of colors for the seasons. Thank you very much for sharing. And Tatiana, another beautiful blue one with the shiny silver, silvery ribbon. I love this. Um, and actually, if you saw this post on, on Facebook, um, you, she actually has a coordinating freestanding um, sewing machine to go with it, which looks fantastic. And then Susan is still, she hasn't quite gotten to assembly yet, but how cool are the colors for this? I love this sort of rusty orange. I cannot wait to see this done. Susan, you better let us see this um, when it's all assembled. And then lastly, my friend Melissa, also from Buffalo, is using the uh, tip that I gave you guys in one of the episodes to use your uh, cookie cooling trays to dry your freestanding lace. It lets airflow kind of get in there um, and helps speed up the process. Uh, something I'll recommend, and we had a comment um, about wrinkled uh, before assembly is you really want to press these before you assemble them. So make sure after you dry them, you press them and then assemble because once it's assembled, it is not easy to get them un wrinkly. So make sure you do that. So thank you very much uh, for sending those to me. Please keep sending them. I love to see it. It's great to know you guys are doing those out in the world. Um, so as a reminder, every day this week, one o'clock central time, we will be doing our live stream. So um, every day this week, one o'clock, uh, you can find that on OESD's Facebook page. We also broadcast it to Scissor Tail Stitches page, as well as in our Perfect Stitch Facebook group. So we hope uh, you'll join us tomorrow as we welcome Alyssa from Penguin and Fish. She is a wonderful designer of uh, embroidery patterns and we did a collaboration with her and it is adorable. And I hope uh, some of you probably have bought it and used it already. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking to Alyssa. So thank you very much. We'll see you again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Time. Uh, happy stitching. We'll see you tomorrow.